Hello, I'd like in this short reflection to take a wee look at one of the books in the Bible which I find both intriguing and very puzzling. It's the book of Ecclesiastes. Here it is here. I'll just read the first verse to give you a little flavour of what's in it. The words of the speaker, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Emptiness, emptiness, says the speaker. Emptiness, all is empty. What does man gain from all his labour and his toil here under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth endures forever. So, that's the kind of book it is. And it's very often attributed to King Solomon, but this is almost certainly wrong. Indeed, most modern scholars seem to think that it's a product of the school of Hezekiah about 450 BC. And Hezekiah was a very great reformer, very desperate, in fact, to encourage the people to return to the ways of God and to reject modern ways. Where have we heard that before? Hmm, I wonder. So what's this book all about? Well, as I read, it's a text in which the author complains bitterly that everything's meaningless and a waste of time. As the king, the writer has experienced everything and done everything. Nothing is reliable because death is everything. The only good is to partake of life in the present. For enjoyment is something that's given to you by God. Everything's in order in time, and people are subject to time, in contrast to God's eternal character. The world is, as we've seen recently, filled with injustice. But God alone will judge that. God and humans do not belong in the same kingdom, and therefore, it's necessary for us to have the right attitude before God. People should enjoy life, yeah, but you mustn't be greedy because nobody actually knows what is good for humanity. Righteousness and wisdom keep us. And the speaker goes on to reflect on the limits of human power. We all must end and death is better than life, he says, so we should enjoy life while we can. The world is full of risk. He gives advice, living with risk, both political risk and economic risk. That's very controversial, very topical at the present time. We, are, we poor humans should take pleasure when we can, because the time's coming and no one can. And the speaker's words finish with vivid pictures of nature, language and humanity marching on into oblivion. Again, we hear that at the present time. So is this guy just one big lump of misery? Is the book merely a recitation of the trials, tribulations and sorrows which we all have to endure? And hey, what was the point in writing it, if that's true? It really would be enough to put you off your dinner. Well, the answer is unfortunately yes. He is one big lump of misery, but he is so for a reason. As we've seen, the book carries the name of Solomon, even though it doesn't look as if Solomon actually wrote it. But giving the book Solomon's name gives the text authority. And if the book was written in the time of Hezekiah, then the audience, would be people who had gone off the right track and they really needed to be told to get the proverbial grip and written by God. So it makes a lot of sense if you look at it like that. Although to be fair, my wee free granny would have enjoyed the sense of misery and pointlessness which it made. So we can ask, it seems to me, if this is relevant for us in the 
post-Brexit, post-Trump, post-modern, post-feminist, post-COVID-19. For a start, the Book of Ecclesiastes has had a profound effect on Western culture and literature. It is read not only there, but much more widely. Robert Burns draws on it in his address to the Uncle Kid. William Shakespeare used it in his sonnets. Abraham Lincoln refers to it in his address to Congress during the American Civil War. And the novelist Thomas Wolfe thought it was the noblest, the wisest, and the most powerful expression of man's life upon the earth. Tolstoy said how it had profoundly affected his life. Hemingway uses it. Brahms wrote Hier Ernste Gesangen, based upon it. Seeger uses the famous Chapter 3. You know there's a particular effect on that one. In his song Turn Turn. And in 2014, the film The Song was inspired by his sayings and following. In the church, John Paul II, in his general audience of October the 20th, 2004, called the author of Ecclesiastes, an ancient biblical sage whose description of death makes frantic clinging to earthly things completely pointless. One of his successors, Pope Francis, cited Ecclesiastes in his address on September the 9th of that year. Speaking of vain people, he said, how many Christians live for appearances? Their life seems so and Perhaps that is the truth. The relevance of the book of Ecclesiastes for us here today is to remind us that we're only passing through and that our journey here is indeed a short one. We must try to do things right. And that means being a God-centred life. Though, like most of us, we probably feel we have a long way to go in that respect. When our journey is over, however, we have hope, and indeed we have certainty. As long as we remember that God is in control and that He alone controls our destiny. Thank you for watching.